the one we're gonna study now is the fact that the first option is unknown. There's uh, this new particle, no one knows about it. Well, the second one, uh, well, it turns out most people have uh, tried doing this some sometime in their childhood years, and they might not be, uh, they might not uh, remember it directly, or at least they might have read about it uh, or seen it in other person. But they probably know the outcome of the second uh, research opportunity pretty good to not try this at home anytime soon. So we want to prioritize actions that are uncertain, whose outcomes are not yet that well known to us. And to actually implement this in any uh, practical algorithm, we won't, need, we won't just require the Q values themselves. Instead, we want the probability of Q value in its Bayesian sense. So it's basically our belief expressed as a probability that the Q value is going to turn out to be this or that number. In the plot here at the bottom of the slide, you can see in a one particular state, you can see three distributions, uh, three probability distributions for actions that each represent our belief about each particular action's Q value in a particular state. Again, for the third time, I'll emphasize it's a Bayesian probability. It means that the uh, variance, the like, breadth of this curve doesn't represent the uh, randomness in the action itself, but only our belief. It means that if uh, the green action is actually deterministic, but you have never tried it yet, so we have no idea, or we've only tried it a few times, then it means that it's going to be quite uh, broad anyway. While the uh, orange action can actually be very noisy, it can have a reward between plus 10 and minus 10, but we are dead sure that its expected return is going to be, what is it, 0.5 or whatever, 0.6. So it's our belief expressed as a probability distribution, the same way you did in the Bayesian methods course at the beginning of the RFP. And our challenge here is to pick an action, not just given the values of uh, or the action values, but uh, given the beliefs we have about them. So now riddle me this. We have this one state and three actions, and the beliefs of uh, the Q values of those actions are represented with those distributions. So these are kind of our actual beliefs of what the Q value is going to turn out. Now, I want you to tell me uh, which actions of those three are uh, even eligible, which of them uh, it makes sense to pick, uh, regardless of what method we use. Well, turns out, yes. Thing is, uh, the blue action is off limits regardless how we pick it, because uh, the uh, red action, the orange one, dominates it in terms of expectation. So if we want to exploit, we would always pick the uh, orange one, not the blue one. It's just better. Uh, and if we want to explore, the blue action is dominated by the green one. So the green one has some chance of being better than the orange, if we uh, believe this uh, belief distribution, sorry for the tautology. But uh, the blue one won't be any better. So either a green one or the orange one, depending on how you prefer uh, to explore and exploit. So now let's get to some algorithms that actually decide what's the probability of picking the green action on the orange one, and hopefully don't pick the blue one ever. Let's begin with Thompson sampling. This algorithm is actually a more general uh, one, but we're only going to study its simplest form for now, for now. Thompson sampling actually suggests that you take one sample from each of those distributions, and assuming they are normal distributions, you can just take the sample, and if they are empiric distributions, like histograms, you can just take NP random sample or whatever. And then you'll get three points, uh, three Q values of each action. The Thompson sampling wants you to pick an action whose sampled Q value is going to be largest. The question to you is, um, on average, if you see those points, uh, which action is going to be picked uh, the most, which is going to be picked the least, and which, uh, well, okay, what are the probabilities of taking each action? Well, of course, there is uh, uh, more than one possible uh, way to interpret those histograms, but uh, in general, you can more or less say that the blue one is going to have a probability of zero, because regardless of what you sample from it, there's a chance of one that a sample of from red one will be larger, so it's no longer needed to be explored. The sample from red one is between, say, roughly 0.3 and, say, 0.8 or 9, while the sample from green can be anywhere between minus whatever to plus 1 and something. This actually means that uh, at some points you will actually pick the green one, as it is better for you to uh, explore it. And at other points you'll pick the orange. Of course, you can also sample with uh, some temperature, use important sampling, to skew this towards more exploration or more exploitation. So you can flatten everything, and this time it's going to be uh, more exploring. Or you can uh, sample proportionally to squares of each probability and be exploiting all the time. 